Hello guys, guys and gamers and welcome back to another video. This week uh, we are talking about Banjo and Kazooie, but before we begin I would just like to remind you guys to please like and subscribe, also comment down below because I really want to start a discussion with my videos. Uh, you can comment something about Banjo and Kazooie, what does that franchise mean to you? I would be very interested in knowing. Uh, my name is Miko, I'm a gaming designer and like I said, yes, we are talking about Banjo and Kazooie today. And why is that? Well, something pretty significant happened recently, and that is Banjo and Kazooie, the original N64 game, got released on a Nintendo platform via the Nintendo Switch Online. And this is actually really, really significant. This is because uh, Banjo and Kazooie used to be a Nintendo exclusive franchise, but the studio that made Banjo and Kazooie, Rareware, was bought out by Nintendo was bought out by Microsoft uh, in 2002. So Nintendo couldn't get Banjo games anymore, and. Microsoft really hasn't done much with the franchise, so fans of that series were very disappointed by that deal and just how Banjo has ended up. So a lot of people usually think about, like, wouldn't it be great if Nintendo still had Banjo? And uh, I think so, yes, it would be great. And there are actually two ways of looking at this question. One of these is what if Rareware was never bought by Microsoft? And two is what if Rareware was bought by Microsoft, but for some reason Nintendo still kept the IP of Banjo and Kazooie, which makes no sense because Rare was never really a part of Nintendo. N Nintendo really never owned Rare. But we should still discuss that possibility on how things would turn out if that was the case, because it's interesting. It is interesting, and I have wrote notes about it, so why not? Let's go with it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the first thing, of course, what if Rare was never bought by Microsoft? And uh, what happened in our timeline is that in 2002, uh, Rare was purchased by Microsoft, like I said a million times before this, but they still made two games for um, Nintendo that had Banjo in it. They were Banjo and Kazooie, Grant's Revenge for the GBA, which was a 2D, 3D uh, platformer collectathon that didn't really uh, review well. Uh, people didn't like it that much because it was really short, it was kind of easy, it was just a bit blah. And then another one was uh, Banjo Pilot, and this was, they were making a Diddy Kong Racing sequel for the GBA, but because Microsoft bought them, they didn't have the right to use Nintendo characters anymore. So they finished the game with Banjo characters, and Microsoft allowed this because they already had contracts in place to make those games. And then for Banjo, Originally, they thought about making an Xbox game, uh, a remake of Banjo Kazooie 1 for the Xbox, but things didn't plan out and they wanted to do something new for the Xbox generation. And then they decided to make Banjo and Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which uh, people didn't like either because it was something very, very different from usual Banjo gameplay. The game itself is okay, if you go back to it uh, without having experienced this drama, you will have some fun with it. But at the time, people were just really pissed off because that was just not what they wanted. So this was of course change, this entire timeline would change on how things went if Rare was never bought. And uh, this is usually an easier thought experiment compared to the other one we are going to be talking about. but. Let's pick up where uh, the timeline diverged, I guess. So things uh, happened with the GameCube, GameCube and Game Boy Advance era. Let's begin there. Uh, Rare only made one game for the GameCube, and that was Star Fox Adventures, which was, again, kind of meh. People didn't really like it because that wasn't what Star Fox was used to be, and it wasn't really that fun. So... They were teasing uh, Banjo 3, a third Banjo game, 
in the ending of Banjo-Tooie, the second Banjo game, and uh, that actually never entered development for the GameCube. So I don't think they would have uh, anything Banjo related for the GameCube, uh, maybe for like the end of the life cycle. That could be possible, end of the life cycle, a Banjo game. But I think they would wait until the Wii, and that would probably go well because GameCube was not a success, but Wii was a phenomenon. So that would be very interesting to see. I'm not sure uh, how they would go about making uh, the next Banjo game, because with Microsoft, they saw that, hey, a traditional boring uh, 3D platformer might not uh, resonate so well with the player base and with the current generation of gamers. At the time, this was like mid-2000s, still remember that one. And uh, they wanted to do something new then with nuts and bolts. But here I'm not sure what they would do because Nintendo can do really well with 3D platformers and that kind of games. So they would either make a traditional uh, Banjo and Kazooie game with some like new mechanics, incorporating motion controls, or they would uh, completely do something different like they did with Nuts and Bolts, but maybe a bit more like the traditional 3D platformers because those do well on Nintendo pla uh, Nintendo consoles and platforms. And what would they do? What would be the new gimmick if they tried out that one? And I think the weird but kind of obvious answer would be uh, shooters. And I think they would try out uh, a multiplayer first-person shooter banjo game. This sounds like completely bonkers. I know it does. But hear me out. One thing, uh, Nintendo was missing out on shooters, though there would be no uh, competition from Nintendo itself. It wouldn't sabotage on other franchises. Two, uh, they would have the license to make Diddy Kong Racing, which they would probably do. So no reason to make a vehicle-based game here. Then uh, motion controls goes well with, you know, gunplay. It was an industry trend at the time, a lot of first-person shooters. Uh, you had Call of Duty, Halo, other stuff, Medal of Honor, that were really popular at the time. Then, looking back, uh, Banjo-Tooie had a section that was actually a first-person shooter section, which was interesting, and Banjo is well known for like shooting e eggs out of Gazooie, so that is a thing. Their best-selling game ever was GoldenEye 007, and this is exactly what they did with Conquer on the 360 in, you know, our timeline. They made Conquer Live and Reloaded, which was kind of a remake of the first game, but also added a first-person shooter multiplayer online mode for some reason. And then what? Uh, I think they would skip out on Wii U and probably do another one on the Switch. But the handheld side, I think they would uh, skip out on the DS because uh, Banjo and Grunty's Revenge, they would have still made that one, uh, didn't really perform well. So they would skip out on DS until they had like proper 3D. And for the 3DS, they would probably try out either a new Banjo game or that was like more single player oriented, not a multiplayer thing because you know, the 3DS. Or maybe they would just go out and do a remake of the first Banjo game on the 3DS, kind of like Nintendo did Ocarina of Time 3D. But having said all of this, uh, it would change history of how Nintendo operated and what games would be made. And of course, all of the Xbox games would have never been made because why would they? Uh, the GBA games, there would be no Banjo Pilot because they would still have the right to make uh, games with Nintendo characters. So that would be Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong Pilot. I'm not so sure about Splatoon, if they would end up uh, making a Banjo-Kazooie online multiplayer shooter and that would be a success. 
I'm not sure if Nintendo would see the need to make Splatoon later down the line. And then, of course, uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. This has nothing to do with uh, Banjo and Kazooie, but because uh, Rareware also originally made the Donkey Kong Country games, but was, you know, purchased by Microsoft, but Nintendo still wanted to make Donkey Kong games. Uh, that was given to Retro Studios, who made Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze, which, of course, if this reality was true that Rare was never bought by Microsoft, uh, those games would not exist. But now, moving on to the other question. What if Rare was sold, but Banjo, for some reason, stayed? Let's say Nintendo originally made a contract where they own a significant part of the Banjo IP and when Rare was, you know, bought out by Microsoft, uh, they wouldn't get Banjo, basically. How would this uh, change it? I think there's more to this uh, question than the last one. And the biggest here, biggest thing here is basically like, who would make the games now? Because now we don't have Rare, we have one less studio, but we have one more IP. And I think that is kind of a problem with Nintendo, to be honest, where they have way too many, like, uh, iconic franchises. They have, like, Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, of course, they those get games all the time. But then they also have, like, really popular games like Animal Crossing, Kirby, Fire Emblem, uh, F-Zero, Pikmin, Punch-Out, and that kind of stuff that people really love but they just don't have the time to make games for those franchises very often. So uh, Nintendo has a problem with balancing their IPs because some of them are clearly popular, but still some of them have demand. And then I don't think Nintendo themselves would want to uh, make Banjo. Uh, For Nintendo, it would be one of those franchises, like I said, Uh, something like Pikmin or something a little less popular a little less popular, so you wouldn't expect too many games on every platform. So, I, I unfortunately, that would be the case. And this is especially true, because while Banjo and Kazooie, the original N64 games, were a success. They were a success, and they were the 10th best-selling game on the platform. They sold 3.6 million copies, but only 170,000 of those were in Japan. And what Nintendo really likes to do often is to prioritize games that are popular everywhere. That's why we had a very long time with no Metroid game. Because it's just not that popular in Japan. And uh, it's therefore not a priority to Nintendo. And then, well, who would make it then? I think the obvious answer kind of would be uh, the studio I already mentioned. So Retro Studios, who made the Donkey Kong Country uh, revival. So it would be a good uh, studio to make uh, Banjo and Kazooie games. And they are familiar with 3D. They made Metro Prime Trilogy and then also Donkey Kong Country. And that's basically what they have done. Um, So what kind of game would would it be? I think it would be a pretty, like, faithful of a game. Uh, it would be a 3D platformer, maybe a bit more linear, something like Mario 3D World Star. So there would be a goal in every level, but there would be a lot to explore and find in those levels. And then I think the style and the humor could change a little to be something a bit more international or something a bit more witty, I think. Uh But the thing is, like, another thing I've been thinking about is, like, okay, Retro is making Banjo now, they're making it Fateful, blah, blah, blah. How many games would we get, and when would we get those games? Because Retro has been busy. They made three Metro Brand games, then uh, Trilogy, then Donkey Kong Countries. So where in that would you fit in Banjo? I think... um, they would only make, like, maybe only two Metroid Prime games. Let, let, let's see. And then move on to Banjo. I'm not sure if they would be interested in making Donkey Kong after reviving one rare IP. 
afterwards. So not really sure about that. And then of the Donkey Kong Country uh, Tropical Freeze, they had a long break of not doing anything. Well, they did something. They did projects that were just cancelled and cancelled and cancelled. So maybe you could fit in another banjo in there. So you would have uh, one for the Wii, one for the Wii U, and then probably a port for the Switch. Not sure about handheld stuff because I don't remember Retro ever doing anything for the handhelds. So yeah, final question here again, like that with the last one, uh, what will not be made? And that would be Metroid Prime 3 probably not sure if they would make like a trilogy or a compilation if there was only two games. Not so sure about how they would do with Donkey Kong Country. Would they um, make it a bit later or wait for the Wii U? Would there only be one game? That's uh, a bit interesting to see. And I can't really say for sure what would happen and or how successful any of these like uh, ideas would be, any of these situations would be, but I think that what makes Banjo special in the eyes of Nintendo players is because it's the one that got away, and that is really what makes it significant. If uh, Banjo always stayed with Nintendo, I'm not sure if it would be that uh, big of a franchise as it is now. There's a reason why it got into Smash Brothers is because people just want to see Banjo again. But if we always had Banjo, I'm not sure if people would be so excited for it. If you go back and play those games, they're good, they're fine, but they're nothing that mind-blowing. At the time, they were, of course, really fun, but Rare still seemed to kind of lose their touch uh, at the end of it when it comes to 3D platformers, so I'm not sure how successful Banjo as a franchise would be or if there would be like many games for it. But what do you think? I want to know your thoughts about this. Write them in the comments uh, down below and I will join you in the discussion over there. But for now, I have nothing else to say, so I will just see you guys next time. Bye bye.